If you're not careful, being a music producer can consume your life. Between long hours and the general instability, it can get pretty tough to have a healthy work-life balance. And it really bums me out talking to other producers. And when I ask what they do for fun, they're kind of stumped. And if they have an answer 99% of the time, it's gaming or scrolling on their phone, which I love doing, but going from sitting in front of the computer to sitting in front of the computer, maybe TV, phone, it isn't much of a switch up. So if that's you, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have some ideas of fun hobbies you can try that will help you enjoy life more, pick up some good skills and habits for music production, maybe as a side effect. And I think I can speak on this with authority because I've tried literally every hobby you could ever have. It's become a bit of a joke amongst my friends that I'm trying to complete every side quest possible in life. And that's definitely true. By the way, my name is Adam and I make a new music production themed video every week. So if that's something you're into, go ahead and subscribe. And let's get into it with the list, starting with some of the more approachable ones first, and then we'll get a little more wild and out there as we go. Now, number one is hiking. Hiking is great for so many reasons. It's more or less free. You get lots of fresh air, you get your blood flowing, and if you leave your AirPods at home, you get some actual silence. That'll give your mind some time to process things, come up with new ideas, or just unwind. As music producers, we are constantly dealing with noise and looking at screens all day and sitting in dark windowless studios. So going on a hike is the perfect way to spend a day off. Now, a lot of folks seem to think that hiking is this super serious sport that requires a high level of fitness. And then if you're not crushing big miles, you're not really hiking. But the truth is you can go for tons of easy hikes, whether it's on well-maintained trails or a beach, really anywhere you can walk can be a hike. And there are free apps like All Trails that will let you know what you're getting into so you can avoid anything too treacherous. And the nicest part about hiking is it's typically free or really cheap. Most local or state parks are free or charge something like two bucks a person. And the only gear you really need to start is a pair of comfortable walking shoes, some breathable clothes, some sunscreen, bug spray, and a water bottle. If I'm feeling too plugged in, a nice hike on my local trail is a great way to just reset and get my head back into a good place. Now, the next level up from hiking is disc golf. It's equally quiet, but it's a little more active. And once you have the gear, it's usually free to play. And there are always people selling discs on sites like Facebook Marketplace. So if you wanna get started for cheap, you definitely can. It's kinda of like hiking, but you get a score at the end. So you can compete with yourself to get a little better each time you go, which gives you something to look forward to every time you play. Now, disc golf is a little bit more social, it's a little sporty, and it's a lot of fun. So if you have any courses near you, I encourage you to give it a try. Now, I do promise this whole list isn't just variations of hiking. And after this, we're gonna move into some indoor hobbies, but backpacking is basically hiking on God mode. You'll need a bit more gear and to do some planning, but it has all the benefits of hiking put on steroids. It's relaxing, it is impossible to work on music at all, and you'll spend gobs of quality time out in nature. It's a great reboot between big projects and you're basically guaranteed to come back feeling inspired to be creative. Much like hiking, many people have this misconception that backpacking is an ultra intense hobby that requires you to quit your job and live on the Appalachian Trail for four months. But my favorite trips have all been relatively short loops. My all time favorite backpacking spot is Cumberland Island in Georgia, which is a barrier island that is full of ruins, wild horses, and gorgeous covered trails. You have to take a boat to the island, so there are no cars, and you can camp about a half a mile from the ferry station if you want, so that's great for beginners. Now, one thing that is important to realize about backpacking is that it does have specialized gear, 
So if you bring a standard 10 person tent from Academy, an air mattress and a giant cooler, you're going to end up bailing on the trip in the parking lot. But you can find tons of budget backpacking loadout videos on YouTube and put together a serviceable kit for a pretty budget price. And once you have the gear, you can use it for years to come. And if you don't wanna do that, you can usually find someone that will let you just borrow the stuff. But building a backpacking setup really scratches that gearhead itch that so many producers have. So if you love putting together different rigs for different scenarios, this just might be a great hobby for you. So now that we've got our Bass Pro Shops hobbies out of the way, let's go over some for those of us who are more indoorsy. Now, one that I'm not super into, but a lot of my friends are, is baking. It can be super meditative. Chances are you have almost all of the equipment already and baking ingredients are cheap. Now, the main benefit of this is that you can show up to sessions with fresh baked goods to give to the artists or the engineers. I have never been upset with someone bringing in homemade pastries to a session. I mean, there's a reason it's called brownie points after all. Now, I would say that cooking is a great hobby for producers, but let's be honest, so many producers have worked in restaurants already, it's not like you need that put in a list. Now, if that is not your jam, getting really into movies and books can be a great hobby for producers too. When it comes to video, it seems like we're all watching so much YouTube, podcasts, TikToks, reels, video essays, but there are so many amazing films out there to enjoy. I've noticed in my circle that more and more people are shifting towards mostly nonfiction, but taking in more fiction is a lot more inspiring for creativity, and there's no harm in getting your brain used to feature-length films and fiction books again to helpfully regrow that attention span of yours. Not calling out anyone in particular, but if you're already playing on your phone right now, maybe I'm talking to you. Now, lots of theaters have subscription plans now, which makes it pretty affordable. And I am legally required to tell you that you should not go to the dollar store nearest the theater and bring snacks in from there because that is against theater policy. Now, if you have a library card, you can check out tons of awesome books for free or use the Libby app to get digital and audio books right on your phone. I put off installing Libby for so long because I thought it was gonna take forever and I didn't even have a library card, but the app makes it super easy to actually apply for a digital library card right in the app and it takes like five minutes. So if you've been kicking that can down the road, go do it. It's way cheaper compared to Audible and Kindle, which come with monthly bills. And if you've got a spare hour between sessions, instead of doom scrolling, take a few chapters in of a great book that is a much better idea because it gives your eyes a much needed break from the blue light of a screen and your ears some time to rest. Now, if you want something a little more interactive, maybe give something like pinball a try. Now, this is my current hyper fixation, so I've been playing tons of it. Now, lots of towns have a great pinball lounge that's open late, which makes it a great place to hang out at night without feeling like you've got to buy a bunch of drinks at a bar or getting your ears blasted out at a nightclub. And it's a great way to kill time between sets at a bar gig. I used to not really enjoy pinball because I thought it was mostly random, but there's actually an art to it. And if you haven't played in a while, you may be surprised how cool the machines are now. And once you've got the hang of playing in public, you might decide to get your own machine. And if you get your own fixer upper pinball secondhand, it is a great way to learn and practice electronics repair without tearing apart audio gear that you actually need to use. I've been slowly improving this little home pinball machine from the 70s, and it's given me a lot of practice soldering and wiring things up, which will make me more competent at fixing my own audio gear when it breaks or at least diagnosing the problems myself instead of having to pay a repair shop just to diagnose any easy stuff. Now, I obviously can't cover every hobby that exists, so let me run through some that I've tried and I don't recommend for producers and some alternatives that are in the same category that maybe you haven't tried. Now, first up is gonna be woodworking. The cons are pretty simple. 
the tools are expensive, the supplies are expensive, and you can only make so many pieces before you run out of room. Plus, it's really loud, and the big one, there's potential to end up getting very injured if you don't know what you're doing. Now, a good alternative, in my opinion, is rug tufting. It scratches that makes something in the garage itch with less of a learning curve and fewer tools, cheaper supplies, and way less risk of going down a finger or two. Plus, custom rugs make a great gift. A great studio needs great rugs. So if your floors are looking a little bare, maybe give this a try. And if that's not your speed, 3D printing is also a great one because you can print so many different things for your studio, plus just about anything else you can imagine. I've made so many little adapters and organizational tools for my studio with my 3D printer, and I don't think I'll ever run out of stuff to print. Now, another no from me is barbecuing. Not grilling out, that's great, but traditional low and slow Southern barbecue. The right gear ain't cheap, and you also have to spend money every single time you wanna do it, both on ingredients, but also the wood, the charcoal. But even if it were free, it can be a real time suck. I thought I'd be able to do long 12 hour brisket smokes while also working on music from home, but to do it right, like really right, you're probably gonna be checking on the fire at least every half hour or so, which totally kills any momentum you've got working on music. Now, a good alternative I found is making pizzas. You can nerd out just as much on the gear and the process, but the active and prep time is a lot shorter and your pies are done in around 90 seconds if you have a proper pizza oven. And if that doesn't scratch the itch or you don't want to invest in a pizza oven, coffee roasting is a very similarly rewarding hobby and you can actually do it with a cheap popcorn popper or a wok. If you go through as much coffee as an average producer, this is a hobby that will actually save you money since green unroasted beans are very cheap to purchase. Now gardening is another hobby that I don't really recommend for producers. If you get too busy on a project and abandon your garden, it gets ugly fast. If I had a nickel for every friend who spent the entire lockdown building an amazing garden, only for it to fall apart when they started touring or producing again, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. A good alternative to gardening is just buying tomatoes at the farmer's market and lying about growing them yourself. Trust me, nobody will know the difference. Or if you've got the green thumb thing, house plants are great. You can take care of them at night and you can just get like aqua globes, fill them with water and they kind of take care of themselves. They're not getting attacked by bugs and wild animals and weeds all day. So a little bit easier, give that a try first. Oh, and if you're like me, you probably have a hard time juggling your music production tasks and leaving room for your personal life too. Or even worse, um, you don't have time to pick up any new hobbies. So if you need help getting your tasks and your schedule in order, I've been working really hard to make the perfect planner for music producers, since most generic planners really haven't been helpful for me. Now I've been prototyping this thing for a while now, and I'm really excited to show some of the stuff I've added to the back of the book. One of which is a really good songwriting split sheet. And I've also put together an input list that you can use for big sessions. Now the book is gonna have all these in them and that's gonna cost money, of course, but I don't want you to have to wait until it's out or to spend money to actually use these resources. So I'm giving these templates away for free so you don't have to wait or buy anything. So just go to the link in the description and I'll email you a PDF of the to-do list that's already out, plus the input sheets and the song split sheets. And if you're already on the email list, I'm gonna send out an email actually tomorrow that has all that stuff in it. So don't worry about signing up again, but if you want that stuff, go ahead and get it. It's free. You can print out 50 of your own. You don't have to buy anything from me or wait for the book to come out. I just want people to start using this stuff because I think it's super helpful. But anyway, back to the list. One more hobby that I can't recommend is pickleball because I don't need to recommend it. Everyone is already playing it somehow. Now, all the hobbies I've mentioned before 
are pretty unmusical, and that's because we're trying to give our brains a break from the studio. But that said, there's some musical hobbies that offer enough of a contrast that I think they still count as a break. So first up, one thing I suggest is collecting and repairing old, interesting beat up instruments or audio gear. It's a fun way to build up your gear collection with things that are unique that not everyone else has. My roommate and I will often go to pawn shops or Goodwill and see what weird stuff we can find, which is how I ended up with this. <clears throat> This is an octave mandolin. And uh, I also got this charango. Uh, there's something rewarding about fixing up something that doesn't really make noise and getting it to pass signal, whether it's a beat up pedal or a banjo that needs some TLC. And you'll often get some really cool sounding gear at a cheap price. Collecting records is another awesome hobby for producers because the community around vinyl is growing. There are lots of meetups and fairs for record collectors and you can get into it for pretty cheap. And there are tons of places to find hidden gem records. And if you mostly buy secondhand, they actually hold their value pretty well too. It's a fun way to unplug from the typical playlist, disposable music environment that we live in. And you'll probably discover some really great music that you would have otherwise missed. Now going to local shows is a great way to spend nights out as a producer too. I've seen so many amazing artists in my town that eventually turned into friends and sometimes clients just by going to shows nearby. And they're almost always a good time. And just don't forget to bring earplugs because they're usually pretty loud. But being more involved in your local scene is one of the best ways to build community and expand your circle of musicians. Now on the flip side, sometimes it's nice to get to know more people who aren't musicians, producers, and engineers. And one way to do that is by joining a sports league or club. Now it doesn't have to be the typical adult beer leagues like softball, indoor soccer, or kickball though. Like if you're not into ball sports, there's probably a biking group, a rock climbing gym, a run club, something a little more niche and a little less competitive. And these are a great opportunity to meet fun people who aren't just other musicians. Like it feels so nice to just talk to someone and they're like a realtor or a programmer, I don't know, like spending time with real people, kind of great. And spending time focusing on improving at something other than music production. Well, that's awesome too. And it can help give your week some structure. I spent a lot of my 20s playing soccer almost every Wednesday and Sunday night. And it was a really great thing for me. It was nice to have a hard out on those evenings. So my sessions wouldn't go too long every night, and I was guaranteed at least two evenings outside of the studio. Now these days, my knees aren't really up for that anymore, but that's what happens when you get over the hill. Now, if you really wanna compete with only yourself, joining the gym is a great option. But if lifting weights and running on a treadmill seem boring to you, there are all kinds of other options these days. Pilates, yoga, CrossFit, kickboxing, really just about anything works. But if that's not in the budget or you're intimidated by going in person or your schedule is too all over the place to commit to a gym with limited hours or class times, there are so many free programs on YouTube for just about anyone. Whatever your time constraints, body type, specific injury considerations, equipment, it's actually really awesome how many options there are these days and how accessible it really is. Now, getting into these sorts of hobbies have obvious benefits. For one, I find that getting in some good exercise in the morning helps me focus more throughout the rest of the day. And I also tend to come up with lots of good ideas that I write down while I'm doing a repetitive task like walking on a treadmill or Stairmaster or rowing. And obviously the health benefits are great too. But for me, fitness related hobbies aren't about like a number on a scale or impressing anyone with my BMI, not BMI, BMI, but body mass index. Don't care about that. The main benefit really is the increased energy levels in my daily life and increased core strength that adds support to my spine, which helps me counteract all the long hours I spend sitting in a chair in the studio every day because back problems are the number one health problem that music producers should 
all be trying to avoid. So if you want to learn a little bit more about that, watch this video next. Thank you.